Ancestor's Legacy is a buy-to-play medieval squad-based RTS that came to Steam in May 2018 and was developed in Unreal Engine 4. Usually I'm not one to cover this type of game, but after I was sent a review copy earlier this year, I checked out the trailer and it looked quite intriguing. Bear in mind I haven't played an RTS since Warcraft 3, so this first impressions is coming from the point of view of a beginner, but due to the game's theme, I thought it might be something you guys would be interested in. Let's start with single player and learn the game, shall we? Let's start with campaign mode. So with the campaign, you have the choice between four factions, the Vikings, the Anglo-Saxons, the Germans, or the Slavs. And there's also three different difficulties, easy, normal, or hard. We'll just start with normal. And I think I'm gonna play the Vikings. Got some pretty decent voice acting along with a cutscene with an interesting art style as the game's intro. Wow, the graphics seem pretty decent. Here's my Vikings, we've just arrived ashore. So I'm guessing we're gonna go through some kind of tutorial. To select a squad, you just click on it and then right click to move. Graphics looking pretty nice for an RTS game as well, I have to say. We seem to have some kind of giant circle around our squads. I'm assuming that's vision range or something. Okay, moving our squad to the beach. Seems like we've found two more squads. They're getting barraged with arrows though. Are we just gonna run over them? There we go, get fucking zerged. So now the squad that I've rescued has joined my squad. So now we're controlling quite a lot of people. Oh, this is cool. If you scroll right in, you get a real close up view of what's going on, I like that. Charge into battle. And now let's scroll in and we can get a really cool view of what's going on with the battle. And I can move the camera as well. Dude, that's bloody cool! I don't think I've ever seen an RTS game that has this zoom in, zoom out option that really gives you an awesome view of the battle like this. It wants me to destroy key buildings, apparently. There's a big force over here. It just looks so cool because the user interface just gets completely removed. And you can get a great view of the action. Let's regroup these two squads together. Very nice. It's really cool because you don't really see many modern RTS games being made. This is the big fight. We're gonna charge the church. We've already sent in the cannon fodder. Blood everywhere. Men dying. Certainly feels like quite the authentic battle experience. So when you initially attack a building, you need to build the red bar all the way to max before you can start taking its health down. Brace yourselves! They're coming in great numbers! That's a big army there. So if we go to defensive stance and we move here, we should be able to hold this choke point defensively. Let's zoom in and see what's going on. It's like a scene from 300. They're all trying to rush through. We've all got our shields up. Click retreat in the squad menu to fall back safely. Okay, so we press V, which is retreat, and we run away. Chapter complete. Man, look at this artwork. It's very bloody indeed. So chapter two, I now have more options. I have chase, which increases my speed, but reduces defense. I've got defensive circle, in which I make a circle and defend with my spears, which sounds pretty cool if I'm outnumbered. I've got change stance, which is what I used before. I've got healing camp. And I've also got Retreat. Something else I've learned about the game is if you press left and right click, it actually cycles between the different perspectives of the characters. This is another interesting mechanic I haven't seen in too many RTS games either. The ability to hide in long grass and ambush. Now we're going to attack him right in the back. Attack! He's taking a bit to kill. He's dead. Now we've got a bit of a stealth section. There's a much stronger group than what I have right here. Wow. Oh no, I'm being chased down! Where's my character? No! No! So now we're in a defensive circle. These people are gonna run into us. And hopefully, this gives us a better chance to kill them without taking damage. Oh, that was nice. These dead people here are actually my men, so what the game wants me to do now is follow the blood trail into the forest. There's a person hanging there. Brutal, dude. This is a really dark RTS. Obviously, as I'm exploring more of the map, more of it is uncovered at the bottom left of my screen. 3v1. Got him. Now we've got some more recruits. Brilliant. We've, we've got a proper big squad now. I've got this thing pop up. Specialization. Choose an improvement direction for the squad. That's pretty cool. Each one of these dots in the screen health bar represent one allied unit. So if one of these dots go to red, it means one person is critically injured and you should heal them up. 
Oh, you can suffer from friendly fire in this game. So you need to position your archers in a way where your team isn't in the crossfire. Interesting. This game starts to become super fun when you're controlling a lot of units. So I've got my main group attacking. I'm going to make my archers flank so there's no friendly fire. And we should come out on top. Oh fuck, our friends are about to get burnt. That's not good. We need to go save them. Now we're controlling six squads. Doesn't seem like I can rescue these poor souls. They seem pretty fucked, don't they? Here we go. We're just going to charge these people. They're heavily outnumbered, outgunned, flanked, and they're dead. See you later, lads. This has been a long-ass mission. Prepare an ambush. Oh, this is cool. So we're going to set a trap. I can't even imagine how awesome this is going to be to look at when there's 100 people charging at 100 people. Well, it may have taken me an hour, but we got there in the end. Let's attack from the back. We're attacking them from both sides. We've got some friends from across the road, other Vikings. So now it seems like the game's introducing me to the recruitment system. So we can click on the barracks and we can recruit some spear rangers. It seems as though we've just come across a deserted battlefield and wow is it gory. There's blood everywhere, lots of dead bodies. I think this is one of the most visually impressive RTS games I've actually played. Usually RTS games have fairly terrible graphics. So now we're heading over to the fishing village. This is gonna get bloody. When you've got this many men, you can burn things down very quickly indeed. My fishing village now, it seems. I don't know why this small little unit's attacking my massive army. Not the smartest choice in the world, is it? Something I find really impressive about this game are the in-combat animations. It seems like there's been a nice amount of attention to detail done in that regard. The animations from each unit's really nice. Sometimes they're doing different combos. They're chopping people on the floor. They're kicking people to the ground. It's really, really cool. The size of my army is getting insane. Go archers, don't hit your own men, please. I'm really enjoying this game, even though I'm not that good at RTS games. When you've got a really big army, they move really fucking slow because everyone gets in each other's way. Oh no, they've got a big army incoming in the background. This is gonna be bloody cool. I think we're slowly but surely winning. It's a really close fight though. I've set my archers to attack their archers, so hopefully that's what they're doing. Town hall's down. Barracks are down. And there it is, chapter complete. Unexpected allies. So for this mission, it's basically starting me out with no units and teaching me how to start an army from the ground up by making buildings, collecting resources, and so on. One complaint I have about this game is sometimes the units aren't overly responsive. You'll tell them to go attack another unit, but if they're in combat with another unit already, then they just don't listen to you, it seems. Look at that army, isn't it glorious? We have so many people now. We really are overwhelming them right now. Just look how epic this looks with the ship sailing underneath. Come on team, charge! They're sending a lot of troops over this bridge now. Torch that bloody archery tower, guys. I don't think this is a fight we're gonna win. I think this is a mission that's gonna be failed. 8 out of 11 ships are lost. Our friends are coming off the boat onto the shore. Regrouped with our friends. I think we've got this. Godric's just in here. 1v fucking 10. Doesn't care. He has lots of health. Look at this guy. What a champion. He just killed a guy. Look at the animations on just one guy's fighting. It's absolutely brilliant in this game. It's so cool. Here he is. And there it is. Godric. 1v10. No problem. MVP. I should really utilize those hero units a lot more. I definitely underestimate them. It took me 46 minutes, but I did the mission. You have successfully completed the tutorial missions. Three hours of tutorial missions. I thought I was doing the proper game. I thought I was in the main campaign. In hindsight, RTS games don't really lend themselves too well to the first impressions format I use in my videos. But after the initial recording, I actually continued to play Ancestors Legacy. The first mission after the tutorial was much more of a challenge, eventually taking me 85 minutes to complete. Unlike the previous tutorial missions though, I had to start completely from scratch and eventually take out five 
villages from around the map. Due to the locations of these villages, I had to split my forces as I was being attacked from multiple directions. As I slowly moved out taking more villages, I expanded my camp with 10 tents which allowed me to control 10 units at once. I progressed to tier 3 technology which is the max, unlocking more troops, armor and abilities, and I built archery towers around my already captured villages to defend them from the stray enemy groups. At this point I started to think about some of the elements that I thought were missing from this game in comparison to other RTS games. One thing that I feel makes this game easier than most RTS games is that there's no strategy to building. You can't actually place where you want an archery tower to go for example. Every building has a preset location where it must be placed. There's also not a very large roster of units at all. Off the top of my head I think there's between 6 and 8 for each faction which isn't really a lot to choose from. I also really wish there'd be some kind of formation setting menu that would allow me to organise my front line, back line, archers and hero units. Unfortunately that isn't the case and when you consider that units cannot be moved in combat other than pressing the retreat button and losing control of them for a few seconds, I think the positional element of strategy leaves a bit to be desired in this game. After I captured the villages I then had to launch a large attack on a city which wasn't easy due to the enemy having just as many soldiers as me, a faster regroup for their units and a tough choke point for me to push through. After repeatedly attacking and retreating I eventually managed to push through the war camp at the base of the city. I then had to use my ballista siege unit to smash a wall down, go through another choke point and eventually push up a hill to the monastery where I was rewarded with a cool cut scene and victory. I'm probably not the most qualified person to talk about an RTS because other than Warcraft 3 it's not really a genre I play too much. Regardless though my thoughts on Ancestors Legacy are as follows. Visually for an RTS I thought the game was quite impressive. Having the option to press Z in combat and get this cutscene style view of the fight that has this natural action cam effect on it was one of the coolest and biggest selling points for me. As a casual player the game does a very good job of slowly introducing its mechanics to you in a way that you don't get overwhelmed. I really love the attention to detail and polish of the in combat animations. It feels quite realistic, almost like you're watching a medieval war film. The game's fully voice acted which is good because you're not then distracted by reading. The music and audio work in this game as a whole is just really good. I really liked the theme of the game and to be honest this was what piqued my interest in it in the first place. There's a nice variety of factions and I think it's cool that you can place traps and hide your units in long grass and wheat fields. When it comes to the cons, I don't like that there's no other way to manoeuvre your units in combat other than to retreat and re-engage. It feels quite clunky. There's no strategy to the building aspect of the game. There's quite a small roster of units compared to other RTS games. I wish there were some options for setting a formation, but unfortunately there isn't. The general complaint about this game is the imbalance in the multiplayer, and the game's quite expensive. Overall, I think Ancestors Legacy is a really good casual RTS, and what it lacks in depth I think it makes up for in spectacle. That being said there are a few features that the game is missing that I think it'd benefit from, such as a formation system, a scenario editor and a theatre mode that saves the replays of your battles and allows you to watch the whole thing back in action cam mode. I see a lot of people say that this game's basically company of heroes in ancient times and despite its flaws I would recommend it however only if it's on sale as the normal price for this game is quite high. But that's it for this video guys, I know it's a bit different to the games I usually cover but I just thought this might be something that some of you might be interested in as I know a lot of my audience like medieval games as well as things like Warcraft 3. So hopefully I've introduced a new game to some of you and if you're a fan of MMOs or multiplayer games in general then feel free to join my discord linked in the description below to chat to like minded people. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you again really soon.